Okay, I'm ready if you are. This is part three of three parts for chapter five. This is really only a handful of chapters and we're going to look at some websites and we'll be done with the e-business chapter. This last part we're going to talk about marketing and web communication and the four main functions. Let me get with it. There we go. Uh, e-business, uh, which we've discussed. Entertainment, information, and communication. So communication in the United States is the web's most popular function. Companies commonly use email to communicate with their customers, suppliers, and partners. But I believe it's going towards the wayside and less popular. Um, many of us communicate, I think, through social media. And there is that problem of spam. Um, and we don't want a lot of stuff in our email boxes or we've got our email boxes set up to put a lot of information into our spam folders. Many inter well, there you go. Many internet users use these spam filters. There's online communities and social networks and marketers are interested in these so they can see what the what their target market is doing, talking about, has complaints about. There's forums, news groups, electronic bulletin boards, web communities. These are all ways of getting information out there for specific groups. For example, let's take, I'm not a gardener, but let's say I was. I could look at this site, Gardening Launchpad, and it lists a bunch of other sites about specific topics, insects, plant seeding and flower exchange, whatever a gardener might be interested in. And we talked about in the last chapter, um, social networking and how in increasingly popular they are becoming. And a company needs to have a social media marketing plan as well as a traditional marketing plan. Let's say you are uh, Gerber's Baby Food or Pampers Diapers. So a site that you might have your marketing team look at is a social media site called Cafe Mom. Might not be for you, it might not be for me, but it's definitely a site targeted at moms. And let's say you're a new mom, there's a whole, this is a place for moms to interact. Um, and talk about different things and different issues that they might be having. Facebook is so a social media darling. Twitter, 140 characters or less. Or LinkedIn, which is a professional website to get professionals to trade information. We also talked about blogs and podcasts in the last chapter, and so great, we are repeating some information. Blog, if you did not know, is short for weblog. And these are web pages that serve as publi publicly accessible journals for individuals or organizations. It's an online diary for the most part. And they can be set up, they can be updated on a regular basis, a daily basis, a weekly basis, whatever the author decides. Blogs are read by almost 30%, one-third of internet users use some sort of blog. So smart, savvy marketers are going to incorporate blogs into their e-business strategy. And some companies have even decided to treat bloggers as members of the press and acknowledge that they have a great ability to spread the news um, and, and be influencers. I chose this Mac Rumors blog. Uh, this would be something that, you know, big deal here. We've got the iPhone 5S coming out and we just were asked to upgrade to the iOS 7 software if you have an Apple product. Well, if you are a marketer for Mac products, then again, a couple of things uh, you would want to look at this blog and see what people are putting about the new um, software. Um, what people are saying, do they like it, do they not like it, and also this is a place for individual users to post their information. So it's a consumer site, but uh, Apple would be smart to be, and, and likely is, monitoring these types of blogs. There's also podcasts. You can download the information um, 
and it's a video recording and posted online. We talked about bar baristas and coffee shops uh, earlier. So if you are trying to market your coffee shop, let me find it here. And we'll just go straight through the site. And bring it over. This is a site called Marketing Over Coffee, and it's a podcast that just covers marketing. So it's really not about coffee, it's just the, the name that they're playing. So excuse me if I misspoke there. Um, it's a podcast, so you can download it at your convenience and listen, it, listen to it when you want to listen to it. You know this, in the car, um, uh, in, uh, in between classes, uh, while you're waiting for a doctor's appointment, uh, while you're doing data entry at work, whenever you want to listen to it. The show is pretty short. This one's 20 minutes. Usually we don't want to listen any longer than that. And it offers all kinds of marketing tips. And the reason it's called Over Coffee is it's presented in um, casual coffee house talk manner. But again, this is a place for you to get information if you're an entrepreneur or if you have your own business, your small business, and you're looking at tips. Here's some great marketing information. We're getting close to the end. So this is our um, next to the last slide, promotions on the webs, on the web. You have been on the web before, yes, and you've likely seen a banner ad before. It's the strip messages that are placed in high visibility areas. So they look maybe something like this. They're on the right hand side and let's say you were just looking for cruise information and lo and behold, now there's banner ads on the right side giving you cruise information um, because they know what you are looking for on your computer. Pop-up ads is when it, whoops, let me get back to where we were. Pop-up ads pops up in a separate window, so you might see something like this Netflix ad pop up when you're looking um, at different internet sites. Again, think about how marketers would use this information and use this in their marketing toolbox. Search marketing is paying a search engine a fee to make sure that the company's listing appears towards the top of the search results. You can also do this by search engine op optimization, SEO, and making sure you have the right keywords. You can also do it by paying. Of course, uh, one of the reasons we like to go online and do our shopping is you usually can find coupons, right? Don't order Papa John's pizza without having a coupon. You can almost always find them. I believe uh, you can correct me here. Air Apostle, is that how you say the name of this company? So if you were to go there, it's a, cl it's a clothing store. First thing you see on their e-tailing storefront is a promotion big there you go 40 percent off and here's our specials so it's a great web tool for us as consumers and for marketers to use to infiltrate and get get our attention there are so many competing forces for our attention through marketing how do they get our attention i think this is your favorite slide so this ends the chapter and all three parts we talked about e-business e-marketing know the difference what an electronic storefront is you've been to them before maybe you just didn't know it was called an electronic storefront b2b b2c which is business to consumer b2b is business to business privacy concerns fraud concerns and then we ended with marketing and web communications take your mandatory quiz be ready to discuss this chapter in class and we'll jump right into a team exercise instead of going over this chapter in its entirety. Thank you for bearing with me as I do my first uh, screencast um, chapters.